This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I reviewed the Canvas Studio 16 a few weeks back and I loved it. It pulls a lot of features from another product I love, the Surface Pro. And it even improved on them in a few important ways. But there are some things that the Surface Pro does better. Hello, I'm Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. And today I'm taking these two devices that I really like. We're gonna do a little compare and contrast so I can talk about the differences. These devices are so similar and the Canvas Studio is clearly inspired by the Surface Pro. Just take a look at that quick stand, the way it's meant to be used as a tablet, the way it so prominently features a pen. So what are some of the differences? Let's start by taking a look at the screens. The Canvas Studio is bigger. It's a 16 inch screen compared to the Surface Pro 9's 13 inch screen. Now, even though the Surface Pro is a few inches smaller, that resolution is coming in at 2,880 pixels by 1,920 pixels compared to the 2,560 pixels by 1440 on the Canvas Studio. Now the Canvas Studio is a 2.5K screen and you might be looking at the resolution of the Surface Pro and going, what is that? Part of that difference is the aspect ratio. On the Canvas Studio, we have a 16 by nine aspect ratio, whereas you have a more squarish three by by four ratio on the Surface Pro. Which is better? It's up to you. I think they both have their pluses and their minuses. Personally, I, I really do prefer the three by four ratio when we're talking about drawing canvases and things like that. However, since the canvas is 16 inches instead of 13 inches, that gives it a benefit or, or a leg up in my book. The other thing that's worth pointing out here is protecting the screen. These are both mobile devices. They're meant to be thrown in a bag and taken with you. Now, often when you see the Surface Pro, you almost always see it paired with a Surface Pro type cover. That costs extra. That's something else you have to buy for this device. And it snaps on along the bottom. There's even a place for the pen to sit and charge. And those type covers are really nice. I have always enjoyed using those. The Huion Canvas, however, doesn't even have any kind of accessory similar to that that you can buy. If you're going to use a keyboard with it, you're going to have to buy your own keyboard to use. There's no kind of cover. There's no way to connect a cover. That also means that if you're going to throw it in a laptop bag, you're probably going to want to be a little bit more careful. That keyboard cover on the Surface Pro is going to keep your screen from getting stretched. On the Canvas Studio, you're going to have to take some extra precautions. On Huion's website, they actually sell a bag for this. It's about $40. When I set these two things next to each other, the Surface screen does look better than the Huion screen. The Huion screen though has a textured coating on it, like a matte coating. This is good and bad. If you want that pure, nice, crisp image quality, Surface is your winner. However, for me personally, when we're talking about drawing, I prefer that textured screen. The pen just feels so much better on. The other big difference here is the refresh rate. The refresh rate on the Surface Pro is now 120 hertz, whereas on the Canvas, it's a slightly older screen. It's coming in at 60 hertz, which is what most laptop screens are. Now, in something that has a lot of animations, like your phone or your tablet, that's an area where I notice that refresh rate. I don't notice it nearly as much on Windows or even a Mac. So even though it's a nice thing to have, for me, it's not really a deal breaker. These are also both touch screens because they're kind of tablet first devices. They're meant to be used or at least optimized to be used without a keyboard. And the touch screen on both of these work fantastically. One thing to note though is palm rejection, something that's always been a big deal when we're talking about drawing or taking notes on a screen like this. On the Surface Pro, the palm rejection is phenomenal. It is first in class across all Windows tablets. It is just great. I almost never get a false touch. I almost never accidentally change layers with my my palms, I'm not leaving extra marks on the screen. And the Huion Canvas does a very good job as well. It's not as good as what you get on the Surface, but it's a lot better than what I've seen in some other Windows tablets that are maybe using Wacom powered pens. So if the Surface is an A in that regard, I'd give the Canvas a B. Now what about the specs? Let's start with the processor. The Surface Pro 9 is the winner here with 12th gen Intel Core i5 and i7 processors across the line. And you can configure it to get one of Microsoft's new ARM processors the SQ3. The Huion comes with Intel's older 11th gen i7 processor. It's not bad. Another thing to note is this is not configurable. The only processor and the only configuration you could get with Huion is that i7 processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. The Surface Pro is a little bit more flexible in terms of what you want. If you want more storage, you can go up to a full terabyte. If you want more RAM, you can go up to 32 gigabytes, although something worth noting is you could also go down as well if you want to save some money. The latest version of the Surface Pro, the 9, has some 
nice subtle colors. I ended up getting the ice blue this year. The Huion, it's looking pretty good, but it's only in black. Maybe it's not black. Maybe that's more of a space gray. So the exciting part is the pens. Before we get there though, I do want to shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. You probably already know that Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building the ultimate website for your brand or business, but it's also one of the best ways to engage with your audience. Squarespace has member areas. This makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand with members areas. You can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to things like gated content videos, online courses, or even newsletters. And you can customize all this to fit within your brand with Squarespace's best-in-class website templates. Browse the category of your business and find the perfect starting place and see how well your business is performing with Squarespace's analytics. Learn where your site visits are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on top keywords and the most popular products and content. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Both of these pens are pretty good. You're not really gonna go wrong. Back in the day, I wasn't a huge fan of the Surface Pen, but nowadays they've made some really great updates. If we're talking about pure drawing, which I prefer to use, I'm gonna give it to Hui on this time. Now there's a couple reasons why. One of the main reasons is the Surface Pen feels like it's just got a slight delay before it starts drawing. It's like the pen is trying to figure out if you're long pressing or if you're tapping before it starts to actually draw out. And that's something I just don't see with the Huion Pen. That's one of those things that's just almost imperceptible, but when I use one device and jump to the other, I can definitely tell, and it just feels more organic on the Huion. The other thing I'm always looking for with my pen test is, is there any wobble? And there is some here. There's some on both of these. The Huion, there's a little bit slow angled lines. You are gonna find it, but when I'm but flow and just drawing, I almost don't notice it at all. It is a very good pen. The Surface Slim Pen too is very good. They've fixed a lot of the problems I had with the older ones. The wobble is almost gone. And a lot of times when I'm drawing, I don't notice it at all. I would still say that the Huion is better in this regard, but it's not light years better. It's just a little bit better. I mentioned the texture on the screen before. This is another big one that you're going to definitely notice, especially if you're coming from any drawing tablet that's already had a matte screen protector on it already. That feel, for me personally, is really nice. I, I love the feel of a pen on a matte or a textured screen. It just feels so much more natural and flowing. I have more control there. The Surface Pro, on the other hand, it's a smooth glass screen. And so what Microsoft has done is they've put a softer tip. I want to describe it as rubbery, like some of the older Surface styluses to give it a little bit of resistance. It's not a ton of resistance and it doesn't feel nearly as good as that matte screen does. That's one of those things I have gotten used to. The more that I used the Surface and I played around with it when I was testing it, I got into the flow and it didn't bother me so much after a while. But when I used the Huion, I just immediately got into that flow and I just didn't have that learning curve. The Huion pen doesn't have a battery in it, never needs to charge it. The Surface Pen does need to be charged. Now, you can get a charger for the Surface Pen too if you get the keyboard case designed for this Surface product, there's a little well in there where you can pop it in and it'll charge when you're not using it. It's pretty handy. And my last note here about drawing is just that 16 inch screen versus that 13 inch screen. The 16 is that sweet spot for me when we're talking about drawing on Windows. 13 totally gets the job done. I do a lot of drawing in Photoshop and there's just so many little itty bitty areas that you have to tap when you're moving between layers. If you're trying to change your brush size without a shortcut, those little things are just a little bit harder to do on a 13 inch screen but when you move up to 16 oh that's nice that's the good size so the winner in this category i would definitely hand over to huion i i think it really excels here because that's its primary purpose whereas microsoft is trying to reach a more general audience and so even though you can draw with it and it's a really good drawing tool it's not designed specifically for artists what about size and usability well there's a couple things to note here First of all, I want to talk about the weight of these things. The Canvas Studio, even though it's only like three inches bigger, it weighs almost twice as much. The Surface Pro is coming in a little under two pounds. It's a little bit more when you add a keyboard cover, whereas the Canvas Studio is coming in at 3.75 pounds. The Canvas Studio is also larger, so when you go to pick it up with one hand, you can just 
feel that weight. You can feel that heft. It's a very different feeling computer, even when you're holding it in your lap. On a desk for drawing, it's very comfortable, but if you're gonna be holding it up for a long period of time to consume media, I think that's an area where the Surface is probably a better fit. The other thing worth noting here is battery life. I found battery life to be pretty similar between the two devices. Now, I have not tested the ARM version of the Surface, just the Intel version of the Surface. The ARM should perform better in battery life. But for both of these, I'd say I was getting two, two and a half, maybe even three hours per charge. It's not amazing, but it's about what I expect. Your battery life is gonna vary, but for the most part, I, I keep them relatively bright for drawing, and I'm also using drawing apps, which are a little bit more power intensive. Now, the only thing about the canvas that I really didn't like were the speakers. I thought they were, I thought they were really bad. They just weren't that great. The Surface Pro speakers do sound way better. So if you're a speaker person and that's important to you, that's worth noting. Also worth noting is both of these have uh, headphone jacks in them. So if you just wanna plug in some headphones, roll that way, you're good to go. And lastly, we gotta talk about price and value. If you just look at these head to head, you might be thinking, wow, the Surface Pro is actually cheaper than the Huion, which tends to put out budget products. But if you spec out the Surface Pro 9 to have the same specs as what we're finding in the Huion, that price goes all the way up to $1,900. But if you're willing to wait for a sale, I have seen the price of these drop down by several hundred dollars. Your other option, if you really like the Surface but don't like the price, is trying to track down a Surface Pro 8. It's an older generation. It actually has the same 11th gen processor you're gonna find in the Canvas Studio, but it's gonna be several hundred dollars cheaper for pretty much the same thing. The other cost to consider is the cost of the pen and the type cover for the Surface Pro. They don't come packed in. Prices on those fluctuate a little bit. Sometimes they sell them together, sometimes apart, but I'd expect to spend between $150 and $200 to get both of those things. So what is my conclusion? Who's the winner? It depends on what you need. I think if you're looking for pure mobility, I think that's where the Surface Pro really shines. I think if you're looking for something that you can draw on that has a lot of the benefits of the Surface Pro, that's where the Huion canvas really shines. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.